Does China fit the bill for you as a currency manipulator? Well, not so much whether it's fitted for me. I don't think it's fitted for the, for the quantitative targets that the U.S. has defined it as. And I think this is why in the Treasury statement, they didn't cite these quantitative targets that have been cited in the, for, for several years in the Treasury's report, they referred back to a very uh, 1988 document that gave the Treasury Secretary a lot of discretion. And the key to me is that they say they're going to work through the IMF. Well, the IMF within a, a couple of weeks ago said that the currency was fairly valued and that they weren't intervening. So to me, this is a, uh, this is a, two, a toothless move, uh, more symbolic than substantive. And I don't think that China's manipulation People are talking about China getting some export, offsetting the tariffs. The Chinese currency coming into today is down 2.45% for the year. We're talking about 10 and 25% tariffs. This is a very small currency move that's taken place. Uh, if, if it's not a big deal, do you think China knows that, Mark? And if they do know that, does that then prevent them from notching this up further? Yeah, I think that this is what we're going to do. I think that this is a kind of a move that uh, tells China that the U.S. had to respond, and it responded in the most toothless way possible. And I, I think that uh, what's scaring the market a little bit now is that Trump has previously, recently, threatened to intervene in the foreign exchange market. So many people are worried that the ball is, back, is still in the U.S.'s court and that the U.S. could intervene. I think it's uh, very unlikely. Can you imagine the U.S. government buying Chinese Treasury bonds and funding the One Belt, One Road initiative? Or maybe they would buy German bonds, uh, Japanese bonds, and thereby giving, uh, paying them, paying Germany and paying Japan to take the U.S. savings. 